just alone. My hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace. When fears are stilled and striving cease, my comforter, my all in all. Here in the love of Christ, I stand. In Christ alone. Took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless babe. This gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones He came to save. Till on that cross, as Jesus died, the wrath of God was sad. Commands my destiny. No power.
think we can do better than that. I said, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right. I don't know about you this morning. Um, I'm a little on the tired side. Is anybody else a little tired? But here's the thing. You said you're hurting? (laughs) Here's the thing. This morning, the beautiful part about worship is it's not about how we feel. Amen? This morning, it don't matter if we're sore. It doesn't matter if we're exhausted. It doesn't matter if we've came off of a bad week. It doesn't matter if we've been sick. It doesn't matter the situation and state that we are here this morning. What matters is that we come into his gates with thanksgiving and unto his courts with praise. Amen? Because no matter the situation, he alone is worthy of our praise. This morning, if we could just press in and begin to magnify the name of Jesus, and if we bring our sacrifice in our hand. This morning, our sacrifice might be simply, Lord, I don't feel like doing this this morning, but I'm going to sacrifice the way I feel and what I want to give you what you deserve. Can we do that this morning? Father, we just thank you. We glorify you and magnify you. Father, we declare in this house that there is none like you, oh God. We thank you. We praise you, Jehovah. We magnify Magnify your precious and holy name. We thank you, that Father, that you are the creator of heaven and earth and everything that dwelleth within. Father, we thank you for the plan of salvation that, Lord, that you had from the foundation of the earth. We thank you, Father God, for Jesus who came and executed that plan of salvation. Father, this morning we thank you for the precious Holy Spirit that dwells and lives in us, that empowers us, oh God, to rise above sin. And, Father God, that allows us to be able to come boldly to the throne of grace and lay down before you, O God, and just sacrifice ourselves on the altar of sacrifice and magnify your precious name. We thank you and we declare this morning that Jesus Christ is Lord. We declare this morning that Jesus Christ is Lord in this house. We thank you, we glorify you, and we magnify you for your sovereignty, O God. Thank you, Lord. You are always fighting for us, heaven's angels all around. My delight is found in knowing that you wear the victor's crown. You're my help and my defender. You're my savior and my friend. By your grace I live and breathe to worship you. At the mention of your greatness, in your name I will bow down. In your presence fear is silent, for you wear the victor's crown. Let your glory fill this temple, let your power overflow. By your grace I live and breathe to worship you. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, you have overcome. You have overcome. Hallelujah. Jesus, you have overcome the world. interceding as the lost become the found Lord you can never be defeated for you wear the victor's crown you are Jesus the Messiah and you're the hope of all the world by your grace I live and breathe to worship you oh hallelujah Jesus, you have all. 
at the cross the work was finished but you were buried in the ground but the grave could not contain you for you wear the victor's crown oh hallelujah says that God appeared to Moses in a burning bush. We know this story, right? And the Bible says that God tells Moses and gives him instruction to go tell Pharaoh to let his people go. And Moses says, who should I tell him has sent me? And God's reply was this, tell him I am that I am. This morning he is the great I am. And I want you to understand what that means. That means that he is not because of you. He is not because of the world. He is because he is. There was none before. There is none after. He is the first. He is the beginning. He is the last. And he is the end. It doesn't matter this morning. The Bible says that if we won't worship him, the Bible says that he will allow the rocks to cry out and to worship the great I am. Because this morning he's not dependent on us. 
Because in spite of us, in spite of our situation, he is still I am that I am. He is still the great I am. He will still be there. He will still exist. This morning, whatever you need, he is. Whatever situation you're in, he is. Whatever provision, protection, whatever financial blessing, he already is. Can we magnify him and worship him this morning because he already is? Hallelujah. Oh, holy, holy God.
way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Yes, way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Yes, I worship you. You are here, healing every heart. I worship you. Oh, I worship you. For you are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. Oh, oh way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. And even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Oh, waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Yes, even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Waymaker, miracle worker. Promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Yes, way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. One more time. Oh, way maker. Miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Praise the Lord. The word of God says that the just shall live by faith and not by sight. And I absolutely love the part that even when we can't see that the Lord is at work, he's at work. Amen. We could discuss big theological terms this morning about the concurrence of God. We won't. Uh, But we could we could discuss those ideas and those theological terms. But here's what's so beautiful is even when Brother Bait was out of our sight for a few months and it was sort of touch and go and didn't know what in the world was going on. 
God was still working. Amen. Let's give the Lord a big hand this morning. We're glad to have Brother Bate back. Thank you, Lord. Now, there's just some people do anything, lose a whole bunch of weight to look good. But um, I don't want it that way. <laughs> no. But we are thankful. Um, I, as I've kept you informed, uh, I've spoke with his wife, Cindy, several times and been in touch with them. And we're thankful that God has brought him back to be with the flock. Amen. Uh, we, we are so thankful for that. Also, I, I don't know how much, um, Sister McCabe, Charlotte, if you'll come, she's going to bless us with uh, music today. We, we don't know what she's going to do, uh, but it will always be good. And I don't know how much of an offering financially that this will generate, but I am going to say it anyway because even if it's a dollar, I'll take it. I don't know how in the world it's possible that Libby's oldest sister is only 12 days older when she looks so much more than 12 years older than she does. I'll let you guys know how that turns out. If I got a black eye, you'll understand. But no, we are thankful today for Sister Libby. And uh, there's been some wonderful women of God this week that have had a birthday. And um, I'm going to ask, you want to play the piano or the keyboard? Help her figure it out. So... So um, I'm going to ask Pastor Libby if she'll come and share her testimony with us. And then also Nicole Goins, Minister Nicole Goins, has also had a birthday this week. And we're just going to let them share their heart one after the other as we get mom situated. Wherever she ends up, that's where she'll be. So. Well, what I'd like to say is 65 years old, the 14th, and I'm grateful and I'm thankful. I'm grateful that I got to live 65 years. I have three kids, three grandchildren, and I'm grateful for that. I got a testimony from one of my kids the other day that said something to me that was every mother's hope, dream, because I tell you what, after 65 years of being on this earth, I've been there, done that, and done it all. Young kids, whatever word you get that is imputed in your heart when it comes to the service of the Lord, believe it. Amen. Believe it. Let it take root. Because at the end of your days, whether it's 65, 75, 105, the only thing that's going to stand is what you have imputed in your heart in the service that you have done unto the Lord and your children and your grandchildren. Let that be a legacy unto you. Mothers, when you ministered to your children for years and you think, is it doing any good? This is something that I've always told myself. People are thinking things that they may not, may not tell you. It's in there. If you've put it in there, it's dwelling on them. We might not see it as soon as we want to see it, but it's working. It's like, it's working. God is always working. I've heard people say, I, I just can't believe that God loves me. I've never had a problem with that. I told this to one of my children last night. Once he's went through all that he has went through to rescue you, how could you say to yourself, God does not care. God does not love me. God does not see me. What I would like to say to encourage each and every person in here. We've been disappointed in this way, that way. You know why? Because the world will disappoint. Satan is a liar. He will lie to us. One thing won't lie. God's word is true, and he's always with you. So I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful that when I close my eyes in death, it's over. It's party time. It's over. And I want to take, I want to take people with me. Could I have been a better example, witness? Yeah. 
But I tell you what, I'm a tough bird. I can get kicked down, knocked down, but I'm going to tell you what. Once you have come into that love, security, knowing that you are with Christ, how could you walk away from that? How could you? This isn't heaven. Heaven's up there. Strive, young people, whatever you hear about the word of Jesus, salvation, love, believe it. Well, I was 46 on the 12th, but I've lived three lifetimes worth of experience, trust me. Um, And at 46 birthdays, we reflect, right? So I'm just thankful over 46 years that God has kept me from everything, death, prison, When I was in there, he kept me from being consumed by it. I had peace that surpasses all understanding, took me from glory to glory. But in 46 years, it took him 46 years to teach me this, and this is the testimony for this season going into 46 years old that I hope you all can take with you. Yes, the world lets us down. And I had went through a trial of my life here recently, right before my 46th birthday. And I was crying out to the Lord, and I was saying, you know how we fast when we pray so that we can get more patience and love and peace and all the fruits of the Spirit? We sacrifice so we can receive more of those things, the anointing. And so when it comes time for somebody to walk past our tree and to pluck a little piece of our patience or whatever and consume it, Sometimes we get offended, right? Because they didn't pay the cost for that fruit. We did. We sacrificed for it. They were yellowing it up, right? So I was laying with the Lord crying, literally, uh, crying myself sick. And I said, but Lord, he took my joy and my love and he's just eating it. And I seen this fruit and I seen him eating it. And all of this juice was dribbling down his face in my mind's eye. And I was like, Lord, help me. Like, and, and then next thing I know, I was 180. And it was me looking at Jesus. And I had the fruit. And I had you stripping down my face. And he said, isn't that what you do to me all the time? And he said, this is why your obedience will be better than your sacrifice, because every step of Calvary, every step, yes, we focus on Calvary because victory, but the obedience that it took Christ to take those steps when he was being spit on, to take those steps when they were hitting him, bloody, to take those steps when they were cursing him, he didn't give them back what they were giving him. He gave them in exchange love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness. And that's not easy to do when you're hurt, offended, and you're by man's eyes right, right? But God taught me through every season we will have a plank in our own eye. So if we could just root down with him and get out of the way, we do not have to go through grief, tragedy, troubles the way the world does. He will help our unbelief. He will make us feel the way he wants us to feel if we ask, which is peace that surpasses all understanding. And he will bring restoration and make all things work together for the good because we love him and are called according to his purpose, even if we find ourselves standing in ashes. If we can trust him and let him be the cornerstone and the rock and start to rebuild us one brick at a time right and like Charla taught me don't pick people don't pick them bricks up and start beating people with it as it's being laid right if we can let God lay those one bricks at a time we can be restored into something more beautiful than we ever were so I'm looking forward to 46 and beyond I think that might be too high. Down here, the burden's heavy, and the road is rough and long. Sometimes my feet grows weary, 
and so sore but a brighter day it's coming soon I'll rest on heaven's shore and I won't have to worry anymore oh no I won't have to worry when I reach the other shore all of my troubles they will be over and I'm not going to rest there anymore Cause my eyes will be on Jesus And my heart will be aglow And I won't have to worry anymore Now someday my life is over and I've said my last goodbye Lord I'll see him standing by the open door then I'll hear him say you're welcome all my cares will be left behind and I won't have to worry anymore no I won't have to worry when I reach the other shore all my troubles will be over and I'm gonna rest forevermore and my eyes will be on Jesus and my heart will be I won't have to worry anymore. But while we're at home in these tents, we do have troubles and trials and tests and situations and loved ones that get sick, get hurt, and have all these things that sometimes want to overwhelm us. But I'm looking forward to the day when we don't have to worry about nothing anymore. Amen? Thank God. I, I won't have to worry about what young minister is getting ready to take the platform and if he'll out-preach me. He, he'll never look as good as I do, but he'll try to out-preach me this morning and no, but uh, Starla, do you want to share your testimony this morning? I know you had a birthday this week also. No? All right. We are thankful for these wonderful women that God has blessed us with. Amen? But um, uh, I just was going to say, as we prepare our hearts today for the offering and, and we ask the Lord to um, speak to our hearts how to give, we want to be a blessing to the young. Now, see, he didn't even know this frame of reference, and some of you may. Does anyone, anyone remember back in the 70s and 80s, there was a gentleman named Reverend Ike? <laughs> like everyone 55 and older was like, oh, oh yeah. Um, well, his name is Isaac, and I've been calling him Reverend Ike. But um, 
Uh, it's just, it's all in good fun. I, I'm really impressed with this young man. We're going to lift offering and then I'll, I'll give the floor to him. But, uh, and Phil is going to help us with the benevolence and our newest deacon, Deacon DeBose is going to help this morning. So if they'll, they'll join me real quick. But um, I'm, I've been impressed with uh, Brother Isaac and it's good to have our missionary. Uh, I forget the name of where you're headed to. Moranis, correct. Okay. Uh, it's good to have a missionary with us that stopped in to visit this morning. He has a speaking engagement this afternoon in Columbiana, uh, I believe. So, um, but it is good to see him as well. But I just want to say, uh, ever since I met Reverend Ike or Reverend Isaac Pennyman, I, I've been super impressed with him because he's the type of guy that just gets in there with both feet, both hands, and he'll help you plow. He don't mind if he's got the spotlight on him like Phil, you know, like everybody's got to see Phil and hear Phil and love, but he gets that from Coletta. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. But Brother uh, Isaac, I'm super impressed with him, and I'm sure uh, the word that he'll bring today will be a great blessing to us. He did a wonderful job just a couple weeks ago. He and I served at another revival, and um, I was super impressed with that word. So been feasting on every since. Father, we thank you for the offering that you have placed in our hand today. We thank you, Lord, that the principle is we can never outgive you, and the Bible declares that you love a cheerful yeah. giver. So, yeah. God, we cheerfully willingly, gladly sow into the kingdom of God because we know it will bear much fruit. You'd never have us sow into an area. You'd never have us waste our time in places that will not benefit anything. And Lord, when we take the word of God that will always accomplish what it is set forth to do and we apply faith in it, we thank you, Lord, for a great harvest of souls as well as the things that we need to have that pertain to life and godliness. God, we pray right now in Jesus' name that you bless Ruthie even. And Father, we'll not fail to give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name, the church says. With authority you've spoken and you set the captives free. You're the king who came to serve, and you're the God who washed our feet. You're the one who took our burdens, and you bled upon the cross. In your kindness and your mercy, you became the way for us. Forgetting all our sins. young man hails all the way from Georgia. So if you wonder why he talks this way, now you'll know. Let's give Brother Isaac Penniman a big hand as he comes. Let us bow. Father, we honor you. We love you. We bless you. We thank you. Thank you for this today you've made us. In you we live. In you we move. In you we have our being. God, have your way in this place today. Say something that you want to say. Hide me behind the shadows of your cross. That they may see and know that you're God and you're God dwelling on the inside of us. So we walked in with many pressures, many heartaches, many headaches. We've heard from CNN. We've heard from all our news channels. But today we need to hear from you. Give us a word that will uh, convict us and help us to grow 
after these days. We thank you that you're God and you stand alone and you don't need anybody's help. And so we lift you up today and put you back in your right place so you can give us our right perspective. It's in the name of Jesus. God, you're the potter. We're just the clay. So take that same hand that you molded us with, that you shaped us with, and keep shaping us in your will. And in your will, it's in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said amen. amen. Come on, put your blessed hands together all over the building. <laughs> brother, brother Sound Man, if you can give me a little more on mic, that'll be greatly appreciated. Uh, let's give this pastor a hand. Come on, let's stand all over the building and clap for him. Come on, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> pastor Anthony Maley. God bless you, sir. Thank you for the invitation. But don't stop clapping. Let's give this worship team a hand. They've done awesome. <laughs> Ushering us into the presence of, that's good right there. Thank you ushering us into the presence of, of God. Sometimes as uh, worship leaders, uh, they have to pump us to a place that sometimes we don't feel like going. So they have to work extra hard. And so they are the most important people. So we tell them, thank you for getting us to a place before the preacher so we don't have to push as hard <laughs> by the time. But then y'all give y'all first lady a hand. Let's give her a hand. Thanks. Awesome woman of God. And good to see you guys and I uh, come from the uh, northwest side of town Metro International Church so I'm good that our founder allowed me out to come speak I have an awesome word um, actually y'all was actually in something and y'all didn't know it but I'm gonna give you I'm gonna give you this word let's go to John 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 19 and 28. John 19 and 28. And if you could stand all over the building for the reading of the word, this, this is the only time I'm going to ask you to stand so you can at least tell you uh, that I moved you today. But if you stand on, on after that, you're standing on your own. <laughs> John chapter 19 verse 28 it says after this jesus knowing all things were now accomplished that the scripture might be fulfilled saith i thirst now there was a vessel full of vinegar and they filled the sponge with vinegar put it upon hyssop and put it to his mouth when jesus therefore had received the vinegar he said it is finished somebody shout it is finished and he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. I want to place the master's magnifying glass on verse 30. It said, when Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. For the next couple of minutes, I want to talk uh, from a simple subject. You can make it out of this. You can make it out of this the sickening and nostrils aroma of death now fills the nostrils of those who is at the cross this crucifixion conditions have left those standing at the cross hopeless and helpless his compassionate followers of christ are now at a place of disposition because on one hand they want jesus uh, to stop hurting but on the other hand they need him to die. What happens when you're caught between a situation and it seems like there is no win on either side? What happens when a dying redeemer presses the pause button because he's concerned about an opportunity for a teaching moment? He takes a break from dying. He prolongs his agony because he wants to give us an example. Uh, and in this text, we see nails are hammered in his wrist. Spikes are in his feet. His body is at a 90 degree angle. His knees are bent. His legs have been shattered up to his thigh bone. It is an unfavorable condition. Blood was spewing from him being beaten. His nervous system is in full shutdown mode. And in spite of all of that, he takes a moment because he wants us to know that regardless 
of who we are, how long we've been with God. Sometimes we can feel and go through what feels like a dry season. I know uh, this word is not for everybody because some of you, you've had plenty. You came out your mother's womb with plenty. But there's all of us that can testify that our resources have been limited sometimes. We didn't know how we was going to make it. It felt like a dry season. Jesus finds himself in this dry place. It's challenging. But as he is dying, he's suffering from dehydration. He's been on this cross. He's been whipped. Can't you see him there? His mouth is now dry. He's lost blood. He wants to replenish himself. He just don't need a whole lot. He really just wants something to drink. He's in a dry place. And the challenge is that he's in a dry place because he says two words. He says, I thirst. Now, this was problematic for me because when John, uh, his theology was a little different from the others of three Gospels. Because when we look at Matthew, he shows Jesus as a Jew. When we look at Mark, he presents him as a suffering servant. When we look at Luke, he shows this universal Jesus. But then uh, it lets us know uh, in Luke how Jesus had an affinity for women and outcasts and oppressed people. But the gospel of John, the number four, it's a little different because he's not concerned about Matthew. He's not concerned about the other gospel. But John, his uh, motive of writing the book of John was to present the deity or the divinity of Jesus. So John takes us beyond Bethlehem. He commits this gospel by saying, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And so uh, all things were made by him, and at that point, without him, anything was, was not made. So he uses this gospel uh, in the words of John. He says, I am. So John's whole intent is to show that Jesus is the Son of God. He's not just an earthly He's divine. His whole purpose is to present the God-like nature of Jesus. So this text is interesting to me because uh, it kind of contradicts the intent of what John was trying to present. We see in this text, uh, he says, I thirst. But that's also problematic because when we look 15 chapters ago, he meets a Samaritan woman at the well around 12 noon, which was an unusual time to draw water, especially for women because the normal time for women to draw water was uh, at 9 a.m. to avoid the heat of the Samaritan sons. But this woman comes and Jesus said, can you bring me a drink of water? He responds, she responds, how are you being a Jew? Ask me for a drink of water. Now, you know the Jews and the Samaritans, we ain't got no dealings with one another. Uh, he says, woman, if you knew what who you was asking, and if you knew who was asking this drink of water, you would give me a drink of water because what I have, you'll never thirst again. Uh, that's what he says in John chapter 4. He says, I am living water. That's problematic because now living water says, I thirst. Uh, but it's important for us to understand, uh, it's important to understand that how can living water says, I thirst. How can Jesus, who offers himself as living water now, be thirsty? Because that our thirst presents to us not the deity of Jesus, but the human side of Jesus. It shows us that Jesus is not only God, but he's God in flesh. And when we look at that word, I'm not as smart as your pastor. When we look at that word, it means hypostatic. And that word hypostatic means to be fully human and fully divine. Watch this. He's fully human and he's fully uh, divine. He's so divine, but he's also human. He's so human that he can sleep in the bottom of a boat. But he's so divine that he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. He's so human that he can cry at the tomb of Lazarus, but he's so divine, he can wipe away all our tears from our eyes. He's so human that he can be hungry 
in the wilderness in Matthew chapter 4. He's so divine that he can feed all of us without diminishing any of his resources. He, he's so human, he can get mad and turn over the tables in a synagogue. But he's so divine that he also declared that upon this rock, I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against. He's so human that he can come see about you. But he's so divine that he never left you. I feel like preaching. He's so human. He's divine. Yeah. All at the same time is important because even the Son of God can throw, go through moments in his life that feels like a dry season. But he comes to the forefront and he's honest about how he feels. I need to put a pen right there to tell us that the first way we can get out of what we're going through. And I want you to really write these uh, down because you, you're going to need them throughout the week. And, you know, your pastor, uh, he, he really preaches. And I'm not really here to really preach because you get good preaching every Sunday. Uh, but I want you to take these uh, thoughts home that if I'm going to make it out of what I'm going through and get out of it, number one, in order to get out of what you're going through, you got to be real about your problems. You got to be real about your problems. Notice Jesus is on this cross. Although he's the son of God, notice what he does not say. He does not say, I'm going to fake it till I make it. He does not say, I'm highly favored. He does not say, I'm too blessed to be stressed, too anointed, to be disappointed. He's the son of God. He's living water. He's divine. He's the door. He's the good shepherd. He's the way. He's the truth and he's the life, but no, none of that matters right now. And I come to tell you how Jesus feels. He says, I'm thirsty. But watch this, him being thirsty does not mean that he's not God. Uh, he, him being in this thirsty predicament is showing his human nature. Here's the problem with the church. I'm going to tell you. What the problem with the church? The problem with 95% of our churches is that we live important seasons uh, as a Christian. We live important seasons as a Christian that are so important to our Christian faith. We got the season of Advent. We got Lent and we got harvest. <clears throat> when we look at this in the liturgical calendar, Advent is the time of Christmas. Lent uh, the Lenten season is Easter, 40 days before Easter, Ash Wednesday, all the way to Good Friday. And the time of harvest, which is what we call Pentecost, 50 days after Easter. But there uh, should be, there's another holiday that the church don't know they celebrate. And, 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 and the, the holiday that the church don't know they celebrate, and, and you may not celebrate it, but some folks celebrate, it's called Halloween. Because what happened, some people come in with a mask on every single week. And they want you to think they got it together. They, they, they want you to look like they got it together. But Jesus on this cross, he says, I'm thirsty. And if the Son of God can be real about what he goes through, some of us should take our mask off and be real about what we're going through. Because God can't heal what you conceal. And don't realize that if we can tell uh, others about our problems, we got people standing in the gap for us. But what, what folk expect you to do is to read their mind and to come ask them, no, I'm not going to ask you how you feel. If, if you feel like telling me, you'll tell me. But one thing I'm going to do in this season is be real about what I go through. I'm going to therapy. I'm going to get the right help. I'm not going to hold my problems in. I'm not going to hold it in any longer. Because what happened, we've killed ourselves too long at the satisfaction of others. Uh, we, we've killed ourselves at the satisfaction of others. But Jesus uh, tells us that he's, he's thirsty. And there's a person in here right now coming to tell you that just because you're saved don't mean you won't go through some moments. I don't know th this gospel that's being preached, your pastor don't preach it, but some folk preach that walking with Jesus would be easy. But if walking with Jesus was easy, everybody would be doing it. 
and, and they presented this God that if you, you, you walk with Jesus, you'll never have any problems. But, but Jesus didn't even say that. He said, I'll never leave you. Nor will I forsake you. Because watch this. When walking with Jesus, it may not be easy, but it's worth it. Because we have a help that those that are not saved have. Because the de- watch this. If you ever want to know how easy something is, look at who's behind it. If it's easy, it's the devil. Because the devil will take your hand, walk you to the cliff, push you off, laugh, and say you enjoyed it. But what Jesus does, he takes our hand, he walks with us, he talks with us, and and because he lives, I can face tomorrow. That's why I'm glad to serve Jesus. I'm glad to come and lift him up. Nobody have to pump and prime me to lift him up because when he breathed Ruah, the breath of God, into my lungs. I was on his ventilation system. So I'm not going to let a rock cry out for me. And, and, and uh, um, we shouldn't have to. The Bible says enter into his gates with thanksgiving. And enter into his courts with praise. But you can't enter into somewhere you haven't been in private. I'm going to come be the cutting edge today. A lot of folk want to just now enter into the presence when they get here. You missed the point. If you can't get it in a place with God, don't expect God to show up for you when you get here. You know what COVID taught us? COVID taught us a a valuable lesson. COVID taught us a valuable lesson. And, And it's so funny how everybody wanted to blame the, the higher ups for, can't nobody tell me when to worship God? Can't nobody tell me when to come to the house of God? And you weren't praising them no way. But all of a sudden, you so deep. Yeah, I, I, I don't understand why, why they closed the church. But watch this, the church is you. And if Jesus can't build upon you, what he building upon? And so I don't have to, Jesus shut the church down long enough for the church to get themselves together so when we come back in, church won't be usual. Because if you didn't get a relationship at the house, you just ain't got it. Because that taught you for real that God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. If it's not done in spirit... And if it's not done in truth, it's not God. So, so he, he, he tells us uh, that he's, he's thirsty. And I'm not, like I said, I'm not going to fake it for, for trying to impress people who ain't going to like you, who don't pay your bills. Uh, I'd rather you like me for being real than for you to like me for being fake. I, I'd rather you like me for being real than being fake. Now, now I'm going I'm to I'm testify for a minute because there were some seasons I went through in my life where I didn't feel like God was present. Now, I'm not saying he wasn't there. It just felt like he wasn't present. F- seven years ago when I lost my best friend, shot 22 times, I didn't feel like preaching. If you'd have asked me to preach seven years ago, I'd have told him, you preach. If you want me to shake my neighbor's hand, you shake my neighbor's hand. But I realized that the test and trials was to produce a better me. So if the test and trials was to make me stronger, I'm not going to act like the test and trials were there. So, so we have to realize that God can't heal what you try to, because sometimes we go through stuff we don't tell nobody. But uh, we ought to, the strong ought to embat, bear the infirmities of the weak. So you got to realize that you have a church family. You have people who care about you that can in the sea and go to God on your behalf. And that word is the propitiator. Like Jesus, he was the, the gap. He was the gap between us and God. 
And so sometimes we ought to be the gap between God and other people. That's why you got to be real. So not only if you're going to make it out of this, you got to be real about your predicament, about your problems. But secondly, you got to be receptive even when the enemy is providing. You got to be receptive even when the enemy is providing. Watch this. He says, I thirst. But here's what got me. Verse 29, it said, there's a vinegar, there's a vessel of vinegar. They filled the sponge and put it to his mouth. And when Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, watch this, he says, I thirst, but there's a vessel full of vinegar. They put a sponge and put it to his mouth. Verse 30, when he had received it. But here's what got me. I had to ask the question, who is they? When we look at the day, the day are the Roman soldiers, the one who are responsible for his crucifixion. The ones who are responsible for killing him are also the ones who are responsible for giving him the sponge of vinegar. It says, when he therefore had received it. So I had to, I, I, I had to ask Jesus, why would you receive the vinegar from the same folk who tried to kill you? But it's important to understand, and don't miss this lesson. It's important to understand, sometimes your blessing may not come from people you expected. Sometimes your blessing may not come from people that you expect. So here's why we got to be careful that when you're in a dry season, when you're in a dry place, don't think the same people you've given vinegar to in their dry season will give vinegar to you in your dry season. Here's what I had to learn, that he never promised us that you would reap where you sow, but he always promised you you reap what you sow. You ain't going to always reap where you sow. But if you sow it, you'll reap what you sow. That's why you got to be careful what you sow in. Because there are going to come seed time and harvest. That when you plant it in the right time, it's going to come back. That's why you got to be careful that when you sow seeds to discord and you be stingy and don't help people, don't expect people to show up for you. Because it ain't coming back from the people you expecting it. And you got to help people outside of your circle. Amen. A, a lot of people, they become cliquish. That if they look like me, they smell like me, they drive what I drive, they have what I have. That's only who I'm going to talk to. But a real Christian. Uh-oh, Pastor, I'm going to get in trouble. A real Christian or an ambassador for Jesus Christ. And Jesus didn't spend his time mostly around disciples. He spent his time teaching them how to deal with people who he did not call. When you look at the, the, the scribes and the Pharisees, they always ran their mouth. And Jesus shut their mouth every time. Is it not lawful for you to do this? Is it not lawful? for you to do that. And, and Jesus said, basically, I can do what I want. I'm the son of God. And if helping people on a certain day is a problem, I don't need to help them at all. Because they, they had a Sabbath day. Well, you got to rest. You got to rest. You got to rest. But, but let, let me look at it like this. If, if we got to rest on a Sabbath day and somebody called you for help, that means you got to wait till the next day to help them. That ain't real Christianity. Because Jesus helped people or even against the law because he knew the need. And ministry is seeing a need and fulfilling it. So the question is, what need do you see on your job that you could be fulfilling that you have not? Because everybody not going to have a mic. Everybody not going to be licensed to preach. But you are commissioned in the Great Commission to go make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and teaching all these things. 
So who have you told about Jesus? Who, who have you could have talked to about Jesus and you say, oh, no, that's none of my business. That, 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 that has nothing to do with me. And you know God spoke to your conscience and said, tell them about me. Because watch this, sometimes we are only, we're the walking Bibles that people will only read. And watch this, you ought to have a lifestyle worth following. You ought to have a lifestyle worth following. When people see you, what do they see? When people look at you, what do they say? How can they see Jesus in your life? How can they feel Jesus by what you're doing? Because if a lot of, oh God, if a lot of people were to produce more of you, what would the world be like? If we was produced, were able to produce more of you, what would the world and the church be like? But the good news is we got more time. <laughs> but here it is. He, 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 watch this. You can't expect these blessings to come from people. And, and you stop being frustrated when people you've blessed and helped don't bless and help you back. I used to be broken pastor in ministry and life, and I used to ask myself questions. Why are they talking about me? Why are they lying on me? I ain't done none of them. God said you got it backwards. He, 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 he said some people, you, you may not get your blessing back from them, but if you put a seed in the ground, it'll come back in due time. Sometimes Jesus has to teach us in a dry place. We can't be so choicy. Can't, can't be choicy in your dry season. Some of us have prayed for a financial uh, breakthrough, but somebody called you with a job. You don't want that job because it's manual labor. You want an office job. You're so choicy, so picky. Sometimes you have to work with what you got until you can get what you want and be faithful over the few and let him make you ruler over many. But God can use the same folk who tried to kill you to bless you. Because if he couldn't, you would make the scriptures inadequate and wrong and scriptures cannot lie that the wealth of sinners is laid up for the just. So when they mistreat you, you pray for them. That's why Jesus talked about the Beatitudes. You know, if they persecute you and despite for you, keep praying, keep smiling, keep, keep hugging them, don't talk about them, don't gossip about them, because watch this, how people treat you is a, revel is a revelation of them and a reflection of them and how you treat them is what God going to judge you for. And sometimes God put us in situations for stuff we're not ready to handle by what we ask for. Amen. I said this a couple of weeks ago. You got to be careful what you ask for. God, strengthen my faith. God, uh, give me greater anointing. God, take me through the crushing process. God, produce more of me. And you're not ready. We praying for stuff we're not ready for. And I've learned in my life to be content. Paul said, no matter where I'm at, I've learned to be content in every situation because I know this ain't the end. I'm, I'm going through now. But trouble don't last always. Weeping may <laughs> endure for the night. Watch this. But joy. It comes in the morning. The good thing about night, and I'm going I'm to I'm be deep for a minute because you are. Watch this. 11.59 on the clock is nighttime. 12 o'clock is midnight. But 12.01 is morning. 11.59 is night. 12 o'clock is midnight. <laughs> 1201 is morning. What am I saying? 
in your night seasons, if you push through midnight, one step over from midnight is morning. So don't get stuck in your night seasons too long. Don't get stuck in your midnight seasons too long because if you keep pushing and you keep walking, there comes morning. And so what I've learned, you don't always have to fight your enemies. You don't always have to prove stuff to them. You don't have to uh, try to get people to like you. You don't have to chase down lies. You don't have to chase down rumors. Because one thing I've learned, that fruit don't lie. If you work what God has for you, you don't have to brag about it. You don't care what they got to say about it. Because one thing they can see is that the blessings of the Lord make it you rich and it don't add sorrows. So you ain't got to brag about it. Well, I want them to see me. No, no, no. Keep working the plan. Keep working the vision that God has for you. Get out of your midnight seasons. Keep going. They'll see it. But the problem is, and God, God rebuked me. He said, sometimes the church want to put on a persona that we really doing good when we really should be working. We paused and gave attention to stuff that don't really matter. He says, what I need you to do, I need you to preach me and stop preaching other stuff because if you preach me, I'll bring all the other stuff like healing, deliver. If we work on healing, deliverance, and setting the cap just free because we've been anointed to preach the gospel, set them at liberty, then God will keep our enemies. Because watch this, Jesus, and I'm, I'm referencing today, I'm, I'm just doing a lot of referencing today. Jesus said, whom do men say that I am? Some said you're liars. Some said you're other prophets. But then he went to his disciples and he asked them, who do you say that I am? Watch this. He says, uh, Peter stands up and say, thou art the Christ, son of the living God. He said, flesh and blood have not revealed this to you, but my father which is in heaven. And then watch this. Upon this rock, I build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Can I tell you, when, when you got Christ, no matter what hell does, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Now it's going to form. Because when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Lord lifts up a standard against them. So he can come. He can try to knock you off your course. He can try. Watch this because the, those who the devil can't stop, he'll try to distract. In this season, where's your focus? Because if he can't stop you, he's going to try to distract you. That's why it's so important that when you go through your midnight seasons, you don't stop coming to church. You got to come when you don't feel like it, when you're tired, when you don't have a reason to come, when it don't feel like God being good to you. That is not time to keep God out of your life. Because the devil knows your weaknesses and he knows your strengths. And when you withhold God out of your life in your midnight moments, the devil can sneak in and talk to you because he know, uh oh, he knows some of us are only riding off our pastor's anointing. He knows we're spiritually weak. And so it's time for some of us to come off the milk and get to the meat so you can have something to stand on when your pastor is not answering his phone. Because sometimes the man of God has a lot to do and he shouldn't waste his time teaching us and we don't apply what he teach every week. Because he could be doing something else. He could be, watch this, when he have to take time out his schedule, he didn't tell me to say this so y'all don't get him. 
when he has to take time out of his schedule or any of the leaders in the church got to take time out of their schedule to, to handle your problems, that's time away from his family. Time away from stuff he could be doing. And he don't have a problem, but some of us need to grow up spiritually. And because some of us, if you ask yourself, where's my relationship from when I first started? Because if I have not grown, if I have not grown from where I am, I am not wasting just his time. I'm wasting God's time. Because God saves us. He give us testimony. He give us tests and trials. And some of us got to pass the test of complaining. Some of us have to pass the test of complaining. Because when you got more money, when you got more bills than money, you got to quote scripture that God said, I will supply all your needs. According to his rich and glory. You'll never leave me. You'll never forsake me. God, you'll walk with me. You'll be right there. And watch this. When the enemy comes, watch this. You got to go to St. Luke 10 and 19. Behold, I give you power to tread on serpents and on scorpions. And all these things you can have power over. But you can't quote what you don't know. And you got to stop getting spiritual amnesia. Because watch this. Nobody in military, my, my father used to be in military, and I called him, and I asked him, I said, what did, how did y'all properly prepare for battle? And he said, every time there was a battle, we would rehearse who going where, who going to do what. But those who seemingly forgot, they got sent home. Because it proved, number one, in our practice seasons, that they weren't paying attention. And in battle, it's not the time to forget. Because when you forget the playbook, that's how you get consumed. What am I saying? In battle, it's not your time to put down the Bible. It's time to pick up the playbook and fight with the weapon. Because Sundays is our locker room sessions. Bible studies is the locker room session. So when the enemy comes, because when you get outside these doors, the devil going to test what he's been talking about. Or any pastor in here, he's going to test what they've been talking about to see if you're going to use the playbook. Let let me get back to my, my text. So you have to learn that anyway... The Lord bless you. You have to be satisfied. I remember when I started preaching at 12, they said I was too young. They said I didn't know nothing. Now that I'm 25, they say you think you're doing something now. When I was single, they said you ought to find you a friend. Now that I got somebody, they say slow your road. Some folk, you just ain't going to like you. (laughs) I'm not going to please you. When I did have a degree, they say you ought to go to school. Now that I got one degree, now they say you think you all that. When I was staying in Macon in Georgia, they say you ain't doing nothing with your life. Now that I stay in Ohio, I'm doing pretty good. They say you're trying to be big time. Some folk just ain't going to like you. No matter what you do, when I was walking and catching rides with people, they say you ought to get your car. Now that I got a car, now they say you ought to humble yourself. Some folk you just can't satisfy. But you have to learn how to deal with stuff and stay in your own lane. Don't don't try to move folk out the way. Watch this. Because if you kill your enemies, you kill your elevation. Because if you kill your enemies, like some of us really want to, if you think back in your mind about that one coworker, that one person, that cross you on a good day, I'm going to hit them, I'm going to say it, and it's going to be right there. But no, if you do to them what you feel like, you just killed your elevation. Because if you kill your enemies, you don't have nowhere to step up on. 
Because he said he'll make your enemies, your what? Your footstool. If you stomp the stool, you don't, if you stomp the enemy, you stomp your stool. So you can't kill your elevation. That's why you have to know if it weren't for your enemies, you wouldn't be stronger. Watch this. He prepares a table before you, before them, in the presence of your enemies. Sometimes you can be blessed by your daughters. If your life has always been peaceful and filled with peaceful people, it would really hurt you. Because if we didn't have trials, some of us would really for, forget about God. How many of us really talk to God on the mountaintop? When we can see the way, when, when God is there, how many of us really talk to him? Some of us talk to God when we're in trouble. Some of us can be round down the road, and, and you can be having a bad day. Somebody cut you off, and you just think of everything to say, and then sometimes God just send you in straight worship. Sometimes God send you in straight worship because he want to let you know that no matter what you go through, it can't stop the day that you have. You just got to redirect your focus. Because you can't worry about over here and you can't worry about over there and you can't worry about back here because when you got a relationship with God, he'll keep you when what's around you is trying to kill you. Lastly, I'm done after this. Not only you got to be real about your problems, you got to receive even when your enemies are providing. But lastly, you got to be reminded about what he's done in the past. You got to be reminded about what he's done in the past. Watch this. They put the vinegar to his mouth. Verse 30. Uh, it says that when he had thus received it, what shouted me, I was trying to figure out. I was trying to figure out. And Pastor, you're going to be proud of me. <laughs> Y'all, that's my uncle. That's my uncle for real. <laughs> but I was trying to figure out this vinegar. Don't miss it. This vinegar is not the vinegar we're used to, not the one you use on your collard greens and all that stuff. It ain't that vinegar. This vinegar was a legionnaire's wine. I'm coming back to that point. You can Google it. It was a legionary wine. It was the wine that the Roman soldiers, who was not a part of the Greek aristocracy, it was the wine that the Roman soldiers would drink. So they maybe gave this uh, vinegar to Jesus, number one, to shut up his vocal cords. That's why you got to be careful what people give you to try to shut your voice. You got to be careful what you allow people to give you that try to shut you from serving God. They try to shut you from proclaiming his word. It's interesting because if they gave him one, I was wondering that the last substance that Jesus would take before bringing salvation into the world was this vinegar, which was a legionnaire's wine. In his humanity on the cross, they gave him this vinegar, which was a legionnaire's wine. The last miracle, which is the miracle of salvation, they gave him this vinegar, which was a legionary, a legionary wine, full of humanity. He's thirsty. They gave him wine. But I kept digging, and I kept researching, and rose to the surface. I understand, because 17 chapters ago, when his disciples and his mothers had been invited to a wedding at the Cana of Galilee, what was the first thing he did? Uh, his mother said, uh, son, they have no wine. And, and he said, woman, my hour has not come. And, and I kept digging. I kept digging. He responded and said, what do I have to do with thee? And, and she said, whatever uh, they say, just do it. And then Jesus says, bring me the water pots. They fill the water pots between the pouring in of water and the pouring out of water. He turned water into wine. Y'all had to, uh, when I kept researching, the first miracle that he ever performed. It was 17 chapters ago. And then now we fast forward 17 chapters later. He's about to die. He says he's thirsty. He's blacking out from the loss of blood. He's dehydrated. C can't you see how this Savior feels? He feels forsaken. He's full of humanity. But before his eyes closed, God said, I'm not going to let you just die as a man only. Now, 
uh, I'm going to let these uh, soldiers do what they got to do. They're going to put the vinegar to your mouth. But it's also going to remind you that this ain't the first time you've had wine. Because 17 chapters ago, it's a legionnaire's wine. Y'all look at it in a minute. It's going to remind you that this is not the first time that you've dealt with this. So uh, I'm going to remind you that, watch this, that certain seasons, they resurface to remind us that if God brought us then, he can bring us now. If God brought us then, he can bring us now. So if you do the research that if he turned water into wine 17 chapters ago, and this vinegar was a legionary's wine, he said, the same miracle that you produced 17 chapters ago, it's the same miracle I'm going to let you go out on. So they thought they were doing a favor by showing your vocal cords, but they didn't realize that I still provided the miracle of salvation by giving you wine. Because there is no secret what God can do. What he done for others, he'll do the same thing for you. Everybody standing, I'm done. You can make it out of this. You can make it out of this. No matter how hard it gets. No matter how life is stacked up against you. Jesus shows us in this text that if I can go through, you can go through. If I can make it out, you can make it out. I, I went to a conference the other day, and they had a nail, and it was one of the original nails. There was a man who brought it over. He went. Uh, to Jerusalem and found an original nail that Jesus was crucified with. And uh, they asked him, what can you do with this nail? And, and what was so amazing that when that nail went through a different process, it turned into a sword. That same nail that Jesus was crucified with, that same nail, it, it didn't change the fact that it was a nail. It just changed the purpose, which was a sword. What am I saying? Jesus took the nails for us to be able to fight the sword of faith with. So the nails that he took was life so that we could fight the enemy with. He went to that cross for us. The song says, what's the cross meant for me? Now, it was meant for you. But, God bless you. <laughs> Jessica, you got to say that. I'm sorry. You got to. <laughs> but God had mercy. So in the darkest seasons of our life, you could make it out. I want you to bow wherever you are. And think about all that you've been through that God has brought you out of. And realize that if he did it before, he can do it again. He's the same God. Same God right now, same God back then. Because when we look at this, some of us wanted to throw in the towel. Some of us wanted to give up. Some of us couldn't see the way. But the fact that you still have a pulse lets us know that you still have purpose. And we ought to be grateful today that Jesus took our place in spite of. Because we weren't worthy. None of us was worthy. The Bible even classified us as filthy rags. But he cleaned us up. And he used us because he had a purpose for us. The devil just want to distract you in this season by consuming you with what you're going through. 
But I want to look past that today and just worship God. Just worship God. Worship God today that you walked in here in spite of. My testimony is in spite of everything I've been through all week. God, thank you for letting me come into your house to worship and praise your name again. Yeah, it might have been rough. It might have been tough. But I'm here to worship you. I'm here to give you the glory. I'm here to give you the honor. And I'm here to give you the praise. It was your grace and mercy towards me that I went consumed. The Bible says, his compassions fail not. They're new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. Even on that cross in his agony he was faithful even when he didn't feel like because he said also in other texts why hast thou forsaken me but he was faithful because that cross I couldn't bear them nails he took I couldn't have done sacrifice of my only child I couldn't have did that He even tested to Abraham, take your only son. But the significance is when you can't see the way, all you got to do is lift up your hands and sacrifice and say, God, I trust you. God, I honor you. God, I give you the glory, the honor, and the praise because you took my place. That's why we we don't come to waste time. We come to worship him in spirit and in truth. In spirit and in truth. Because if the devil can never stop your praise, because he know what moves God. The Bible says he inhabits the praises of his people. So don't keep back from God. What moves him? And you got to have a faith. You got to have that faith in this season to get over the hump. To get over the hump. It ain't going to always be like this. It ain't going to always feel like this. Push past your night moment and your midnight because morning is coming. Again, I said it, 1159 is night. 12 o'clock is midnight. But 1201 is morning. Keep going because you one step away. Don't give up. I come to tell somebody today, I don't know why I'm here. Don't give up because you one step away from a breakthrough. You one step away. Get over the hump. So as they sing, I'm done. Pastor, you can come. Okay, cool. If there's anybody that need to come down for prayer, if you don't know Jesus and the pardon of your sins, I would get to know him today. And the reason I would get to know him today because if I leave out of here and something happened to me, I want to be sure that I spent time with him. And he can claim me and say, well done. That's all. My, my goal in life is to hear him say, well done. Thou good and faithful servant. Been faithful over a few things. I want to be a good steward of him. Not just of the things he blessed me with, but I want to be a good steward of him. God, did I do what you told me to do? Or did I let my problems consume me to stop me from what you called me to do? So God, we honor you. We bless you. We come now to tell you thank you. We come to give you the glory. We come to give you the honor that we press through our heartaches. We press through our pains. We press through sickness. The diagnosis from the doctor, we know you're a healer. 
those that may be incarcerated, we know you can deliver them. You can get their attention. That way with child, you can get their attention. Everything, our anxieties, our depressions, when people try to put the wrong diagnosis on us, we commend these things into your hand today, O oh God. And we come humbly as we know how to give you praise to give you glory and to give you honor for who you are, not for what you can do for us, but just for who you are. Just for what you've done for us. If we never ask you for anything, we tell you thank you for what you've already done. Because you didn't have to do it. We weren't worthy. We wasn't qualified. But you've cleaned us up. And you've made a way. You've cleaned us up and you made a way out of no way. You're saving the lost right now, God. You, you, you're healing them now, oh God. If you knew Hallelujah. Then, you'd believe me now. Hallelujah. Turn my whole hey. life upside Hallelujah. down. Took the old man Thank and you, Jesus. me. Thank you, God. Mm. That's just what the mercy Thank of you, God can do. God just so good. God now just so I'm awesome. To tell the we story leave our promise right here at the altar. We leave our promise right now at the altar. Mercy. Whatever your the power of man of God is, is dealing with God, I'm be so his comforter. And be his guide. Wasn't based on what Take I've his done. feet and walk with him. Let him know that you're mercy. real. He knows and you're real. Power but show yourself in a different way. Now I'm alive. Show him the full purpose that you have for his life. How I've we overcome. Honor and pray. It's his goodness and that you're mercy. Him all from the inside out. And the power of you give him a heart blood. to serve I'm you so more glad and more. That my freedom In the name of Jesus. wasn't based on what I've done. Hallelujah. It's the goodness it's and God. mercy and the power Thank of you, the blood. I'm living. Of what the mercy of God can do. So, Father, we come to you right now for a healing. If you Lord, knew God, me then, you'd believe me God, now. You turn my whole you know, life upside God, down. To the us. old man, to and he made me new. That's what we the mercy of we God can do. Now I'm alive to tell the story how I've overcome. Come. It's His goodness and mercy and the power of His blood. I'm so glad that my freedom wasn't based on what I've done. It's His goodness and mercy and the power of His blood. I thought I deserved Hold to be six feet beneath the earth For so all the good. things I've done The things I've said right The choices In made the that Jesus. I regret Oh, I would, would still be lost Oh, but for that the mercy of, of God, you got a now I'm God. alive to tell the story how I've overcome. It's His goodness and mercy and the power of His blood. I'm so glad that my freedom 
wasn't based on what I've done. It's His goodness and mercy and the power of His blood. Now I'm alive to tell the story how I've overcome. It's His goodness and mercy and the power of His blood. I'm so glad that my freedom wasn't based on what I've done. It's His goodness and mercy and the power of the blood. I'm so glad that my freedom wasn't based on what I've done. It's His goodness and mercy and the power of His blood. I'm so glad that my freedom wasn't based on what I've done. It's His goodness and mercy. One more time. And the power of the blood. I'm so glad that my freedom wasn't based on what I've done. It's His goodness and mercy and the power of the blood. Was the cross made for me that my Savior carried? Now I've been made free by the mercy of God. Was the grave meant for me where my By the mercy of God was the cross meant for me that my Savior carried. Now I've been made free by the mercy of God. It was the grave meant for me where my sin lay buried. Now I stand redeemed by the mercy of God was the cross meant for me that my Savior carried now I've been made free by the mercy of God and was the grave meant for me where my sin lay buried now I and redeemed by the mercy of God. Now I'm alive to tell the story how I've overcome. It's His goodness and mercy and the power of His blood. I'm so glad that my freedom wasn't based on what I've done. It's His goodness and mercy and the power of His blood. One time. Was the cross meant for me that my Savior carried? Now I've been made free by the mercy of God and was the grave meant for me where my sin lay buried now i stand redeemed by the mercy of god glory to god glory 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 thank you lord praise the name of the lord yeah. Aren't you thankful this morning the word of the Lord came and visited with us today? Can we give the Lord a big hand? Thank you, Lord. Excellent sermon. Much needed and timely, especially for me. So I, uh, I appreciate your labor in the word. And even though you ran a hundred references, and that's sort of an inside joke. But I am thankful for Brother Isaac. Amen. Can we give him a big hand today? Thank you, Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. I, I can't pull off skinny jeans, but um, <laughs> but, 
But I'd love to see more and more young men his age serving the Lord like that, wouldn't you? And it's possible if we'll just pray him in, right? We've got our own 28-year-old this year, 28-year-old this year, and we got Ben, and thank God for Philip and Caden, good young men. Kevin back there, the champ, wanting to throw hands. But um, I'll be honest, I would love to see, even Brother Nick, can't forget about young Nick. I'd like to see more young men fall in love with Jesus. I mean, that just says something when you've got someone that's willing to turn down all the temptations of life to put the Lord first. Uh, that's impressive to me. So I, I thank God for Brother Isaac and also our young men. Amen. We thank God for that. Um, so July the 28th will be our first uh, Canton Free Will Baptist Church game game day game CFBC games um, if you have any questions you can see uh, Lexi Davis for any details for that but that is Sunday I'm sorry Friday July the 28th at 6 30 um, and then July the 31st is the last day for the ladies to sign up and their first deposit is due for their retreat in the Carolinas in October um, and that will be to Emerald Island I know uh, Charlie's been working closely with Amanda Davis. They're super excited about that. And I wish I could go, but I'm going to go fishing instead. But um, no, I'm just teasing. But if you're interested in that, please see Charla. Jessica Schaefer and Ben, uh, they, they took a little break and went to Georgia because uh, they said, we're going to go here. A real Georgian, no, don't leave. No, I'm kidding. But we are thankful this, this morning uh, for everything that's going on. There's a lot... Someone asked me to make the announcement, but this coming Friday is July the 21st. Uh, I will be um, speaking at Pentecostal Church of Ford Runs, their homecoming this year, and that's Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So that, um, that, those services start, I think it's 6. I think they moved it up to 6 instead of 7, but if we're a little late, we'll blame it because we're from Ohio. Um, but I'll find out and let you know for sure. If anyone needs directions or hotel information that would like to go to Philippi, um, you can see me, see Charla or Jessica. Uh, I think we've got those numbers memorized by heart by now. But um, So if you have any questions about that and you're interested in going, just uh, let us know. July this month and all the way through August 6th, there's going to be a school drive, school supply drive where we're collecting school supplies and gently used new and new kids' clothes. So we want to be a blessing to the community, and uh, school is starting soon. So I'm assuming that's you. Who is that? All right, Hunter, Danielle, are you here today? All right, well, you can see Charlie anyway, and then she'll help get funnel that where it needs to go. All right, is everyone satisfied today? Did, did you get what you came for? All right. If not, I, I encourage you to go back, rewatch that sermon, take more notes, because there were some excellent reminders in there that Jesus paid the price so that we could be successful. And whom the Son is made free is free indeed. Amen. So again, thank you, Pastor Isaac. Uh, would you remind me the name of the church that you're, it's Metro something? Metro International. Um, as he said, he he comes from Macon, Georgia, Georgia, but he's. Bacon, bacon. All right. Um, he comes from Georgia, but he is serving here in Ohio. The Lord has opened up an opportunity. Um, Charla, uh, Jessica and Crystal, is that the only ones? That, and Lexi Maley that uh, came here, they all work for Alive Now, which is the mother facility to Metro International. And many times we'll be going through the neighborhood, and there's a big box truck with uh, – bears and whatever on the side of it. Nicole Goins, also, Meisner, also worked there for a, a spell of time. Um, but they, they work in this community. They help provide uh, the gospel to the children and other outreach ministries. So, but he is the pastor over the church that they have over on Whipple. So um, they meet on Saturdays, 5 o'clock. Okay. So if you're ever looking for something to do on a Saturday at 5 o'clock and you enjoyed that Georgian preacher, you can hear him again next Saturday at 5 o'clock, all right? 
But we do. We love uh, Brother Isaac. And I'll, I'll be your uncle. I don't have a problem doing that. But I ain't wearing skinny jeans. All right. If everybody's satisfied today. All right. Father, we just say thank you for the word of God. Thank you, Lord, that it produces hope. It encourages our hearts. We thank you for the example of the word of God today that if you've endured, God, you can empower us to also endure. And we ask today, God, that you would bless Brother uh, Pennyman, God, for the word that he has labored in, that you would increase, give him many souls for his labor, that you would open up doors that no man could open for him, but, Father, you would close doors that would be harmful to him that no man can shut. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus right now, Lord, that you would bless these, your people, the sheep of your pasture. God, we thank you that your face shines upon us. We thank you for your healing hand that abides upon us and how you brought Brother Mike back to us. And we thank you for those that were sick and afflicted and they've been brought back. God, we thank you that you're a miracle working God today. We acknowledge that. And Father, we ask that you continue to allow your grace and your peace to be shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Ghost. And also our visiting missionary, Lord, that you bless him as well. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I'll see you this week sometime.